course, Kombonga, uh, Genki Desu ka. Hope you are Genki Desu, hope you're well. Welcome to Thursday evening and um, karate in your own dojo, uh, lockdown 2.0, whatever else you want to call it. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Sensei Scoot, I'm the Chief Instructor of Asahi Shotokan Karate and Sky England. And um, this is the way we are doing karate at the moment, we're back to doing it in our own dojos. So welcome to mine, uh, otherwise known as the kitchen. The family have um, left the building to give the dog a walk, so uh, Holly might not join in this evening. Um, but uh, to everybody else, thank you very much for joining us. We'll give a few seconds for people to sort of sign in, and uh, <clears throat> I this evening can actually say hello to you. It's good, so I've got my screen back so I can see uh, who's watching and everything. And uh, any comments you might put on there, please respect that we don't use foul language on our screens, please. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get to say hello to you in a moment. Um, I must apologise before we start this evening. Um, on Tuesday, because it was the first time I'd done it in ages, I recorded the session to put on Facebook, but I didn't save it to my device, so I couldn't put it on YouTube. So I must apologise. <clears throat> so um, I will make sure this evening I'll work that out and try and get it on YouTube within the next two days. Okay, so I try to put these lessons on there in case you don't have Facebook Live. Um, or access to Facebook indeed. We thought about Zoom and we thought about Teams and there's other different various platforms that we could use to do this but uh, the consensus was that through the last lockdown uh, Facebook Live was the best uh, form of media for us to use um, and worked really well actually uh, from, from all the feedback that I got. <clears throat> so tonight's lesson is a um, continuation if you like or maybe uh, an evolution of what we did on Tuesday. So Tuesday we just did some basic punches, we did three basic punches uh, which we will recap this evening and then I'm going to give you at least three more which are slightly different and quite quirky because we don't use those in the dojo as much but it's good uh, again sometimes to bring those more unusual techniques into our karate um, <clears throat> again if you're a beginner just have a go have a bit of fun if you're a ninth dan then welcome to our dojo and I uh, hope you enjoy training with us and if you want to share your ideas with me that would be fantastic because uh, I love learning as much as I love teaching. So um, let's say hello to a few people. Um, okay, it's just scrolled down there. So Sensi Ken Us, good to see you, Ken. And Sensi Andy. Um, we've got uh, uh, Zach. Uh, no, uh, yeah, Zach. We've got who's who else have we got here? Um, Ruby. We've got Harry. We've got Isaac. Um, Andy Sensei, uh, Freya, Us and Thomas. Okay, this screen is slightly weirder than my old one, so I'm so sorry that I'm not quite as good at saying hello as I used to be, but uh, I don't know what this actually means. Um, okay, well it's good, good to see you all anyway, and anybody else that's here I'll try and have a scroll through later on and see if I can... Uh, can say hello to you as well. So thanks so, so much again for joining us on Thursday evening. Okay, let's start with a warm up because again my floor is freezing. So heels together, toes point out, hands by your sides. Okay, and remember to, to stand tall. Uh, be confident in yourself and confident in your own body. Okay, uh, karate is really good at building that relationship between your mind and your body and bringing the two together so you feel good about yourself. That's why I do it. Okay, and ready. Oh, Excellent. Okay, let's just start with a little warm up with the arms because we're mainly using the arms this evening. So the arm in Japanese is called Wan, W A N, is the way we spell it. And remember, when you're doing any sort of warm up exercises, just relax. Let the muscles, let the bones, let everything just relax. Okay, take your left arm and rotate forwards, take your right arm back. And if you're struggling with this, I used to, but as with everything in life, if you keep practicing, eventually work it out. And change again. And change again. This is really good for getting the blood flowing through the arms. Okay, now stretch your arms out and across. And then cross them over at the back. Make these movements nice and relaxed, nice and free. Fingers as well, your ubis. Okay, let's shake those. These are your fingers and your ubis. Then tekubi, your wrist. And then your lower arm, gidan one. And then your upper arm. 
shoulders, just bring them up and down. Okay, and thumbs on the shoulders, so feel the top of your shoulder joint here and just rotate. I call this swimming with short arms and backwards. Okay, that should be your arms and fingers and wrists and everything all warmed up. Okay, so with your legs, just bring in the right knee up and left knee, right knee, left knee, right knee, left knee, right knee, left knee, right knee, left knee. Okay, then in front starts and just ever so slowly, slowly swing your leg, not kicking, so just swinging, just to get a bit of blood in the legs, flowing, gradually get higher and higher. But don't go too much too soon. So just again relaxing, not kicking, just letting the blood flow around the body a little bit freer. Okay, good. Then your hips, so koshi, so just move your hips around. One of the things with uh, karate is people often think, well, oh, you need to be super fit, super healthy, you need to be able to do the splits. Um, I used to be able to do the splits, not the side splits, but front splits, quite comfortably when I was younger, when I first started. I can honestly say to you, it's made no, no improvement, it doesn't make me any better as a karateka. Okay, but now I can't do that, so I'm getting a bit old, so um, you don't need to be able to do that sort of thing. Um, I've seen karateka train in their 80s and be just as fast as people in their 20s, so um, it's all about your connection with your body. Okay your mind and soul and everything coming together and working how to use it. And so often we find that more experienced karateka um, instructors, etc., are faster than their students, even though they might be 40, 50 years older. So uh, te technique is the thing, <laughs> technique is the thing. And um, we're always seeking for perfection um, as karateka uh, and we never quite reach it. So it's like trying to look for the uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's never gonna be actually, you're never gonna get to it. But it's great fun trying to get there. Great fun trying to get there. Okay, us. So let's uh, put the left arm out and, and uh, but let's remember how to make a fist first of all. So, very quickly, um, take your ubis, just wave them around. Okay, curling, curling from the little ones in, then the second one, third, and fourth. I bring them in. I feel a little bit like Spider Man if I'm going to be honest here, and that's quite cool. So, uh, again, little fingers, then second fingers, in, then third, and then bring them in like so. So, the fingers are like this, okay, like that. Thumbs are stuck out. Then take the thumb over the top of the fingers and lock the fingers in. So this is like, yeah, lock, locking that motion and then turn the hands over. And then you've created uh, Ken. Ken means fist, okay? Si Ken is the part that we're punching with for at least the first three punches, but this might change this evening because we're gonna do some ex uh, 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 different punches. So we're punching with here, not, not here. The, the fourth and fifth metacarpals, these bones here, they're very weak, uh, very skinny as well. Um, so we punch with these, these and that. So again, make sure as we said on Tuesday, keep a line, a straight line, and when you punch, you punch with your arms straight. Okay, high grade's obviously not quite straight, okay? And put your left arm out here into Chokazuki. Okay, just try to pay attention as we said on Tuesday to your Mbusen, your performance line. So I'm trying to line up with the uh, one of the three camera lenses I've got in front of me. I never quite get it right, but um, this is my center, it may look off to you, but it is correct for me. And then pay attention to your right elbow in this case, okay? And, and, and don't let your elbow drift out. So if you do this, then straight away your shoulder moves, okay? You'll feel your shoulder move if you move your elbow in and out. This is an indication to your partner or opponent in the, in the case of a fight that you're coming to them so they can see everything that happens. So bring this, tuck it in. And then as I said on Tuesday, this hand comes straight back. This hand comes straight back, this hand will go straight out. And we use this action of uh, shime, shime contraction is, okay, is basically the word, that's what it means. Okay? And we're contracting these muscles to draw this arm back and to force this arm out. And likewise, so the punching hand we're pushing out, okay, and the returning hand, which is known as hikite, we're, we're pulling back. The speed of both has to be balanced. Okay? So if you think of yin and yang, Okay, you must keep it balanced. You can't have 60-40. So 
So you've got to get this balance correct, and, and ultimately that's what you're always looking for in karate anyway, is balance. So from here, left arm out, we'll do nice and slow chokazuki, okay, just to focus on our technique. Uh, Height-wise of your punch, around here, this is your solar plexus area, okay, so here, or a little bit lower into the tummy is okay, but not, not here, not here, not up here yet, okay, so maybe later. So just relax the shoulders, okay, relax everything, and then just punch each. Knee. Sam. She. Go. Technique, okay. Technique in Japanese is waza, okay. So waza zuki, punching technique, okay. And we're trying to always improve, always get better. So when we start karate, we tend to throw our arms out a little bit. We don't make a good fist. But as we gain uh, experience, we we make sure that we focus on those things that will make it better. How do we create speed? Well, speed is is generally the faster we can go in a straight line, the faster speed will we'll get to a point. So in other words, if you come out, you go round, you go round, it takes longer. I hope that makes sense. I've really kind of described that quite badly. But imagine this as a train line and you're going straight along the line. And that's probably the easiest way to, to, to think of this, that punch going straight. So the elbow comes away from the body, it comes round. Keep it tucked in. Okay, let's go for uh, 10 more punches, but let's go medium speed now, so a little bit faster. Itch, ni, san, shi. Go, rock, six, hatch, go, eight, two, yo, eight, and yame. Very good. So we're trying to relax from the moment the punch leaves our hip, okay, and return in hand, the hickety hand, hickety hand. We're trying to relax, and we only really tense upon the end, the kime, in the end of the technique, okay. And you'll notice in karate that we, in Shotokan, we turn our fist. This enables us to kick, to get kime better, okay, to get this end correct. And it's where we get a lot of our power from, to be perfectly honest. Okay, so again, left arm, let's go for fifth, uh, so 10 punches again. 10 punches, full speed and power. So relax. Ish. Ni. Tom. Chi. Go. Rok. Sich. Hatch. Ko. Ajo. Hiya. So with karate, uh, in my dojo, and this is just my dojos, um, we always encourage everything bow before and everything bow after. But when we bow, we're not finished there. We return to yoi. Yoi meaning ready. And this stance is a shizentai stance called hachidachi, open leg stance. So we always come back to here. And then I will say to the students, enoi, which means relax. And that's my understanding of it. Um, or just tell them relax in English. We use it, a mixture of English and Japanese words in our karate. Uh, we try to keep as traditional as we can, um, but obviously teaching young people uh, in particular, we have to use English. And actually any other means of language that can communicate with them, and I'm pretty, pretty skilled at that, I think. Was verbal and non-verbal, I guess that's the way to do it. Okay, so that was Chokuzuki, if you remember that, we did that Tuesday. Now we're gonna do uh, Oizuki, but we're gonna do it differently. We're gonna do it differently, so have a plan. So from here, oizuki, if you remember on Tuesday, we did st step back in Gedanberai, down the block, and we just stepped forward, front punch. This time we're going to do it from Shizentai, natural stance, okay, hachidachi, and we're going to come from the hip, from this position here. So we literally are going to come bring to hip, because this will teach you, not teach you, that's the wrong word, this will um, make you focus on bringing this to the hip. So you come here, and then punch oizuki, and then withdraw. Here, and then come back. So you're kind of just gonna to have to put this onto the hip. I want you to think, basically, this is where it stays, until this, this halfway point. Halfway point. So the focus right here is keeping this punch straight and keeping this punch correct from the side of the body. Again, oizuki, people often let the elbow drift, the shoulder drop, 
okay, or shoulder comes up, it's even worse. And as they come through, it all kind of gets skewed, skewed, okay. So we want to make sure we're practicing better from the hips. So from this natural stance position here, just bow, and you're in. Okay, so left hand onto the left hip, okay, and punch. And then down eight, and right hand onto the right hip, and punch. And yeah, mate. Uh, can I just quickly ask, can you hear me? Um, I'm actually not sure if anybody's watching either, because my screen's frozen. Ah, uh, Magdalena, good evening. Hope you're well, Joe, good evening. Good evening, Laura. Good evening, Norman Lowe. So there's quite a few people there. Us. Okay, I hope you can hear me anyway. I have no idea whether you can or not. So from this position again, this natural stance, right? Hey, hey, oi. So from here, from this position here, draw and punch. And make sure down this centre line. Hey, and yame. Hey, and back. And back. And back. Okay, so from here to the hip to the centre. From here, elbow, focus, straight forwards, centre. This is one of my more challenging punches for me. I find this always very difficult. Being a person that naturally leans forwards, for me, not a good technique. So when we go oizuki, our posture here, this position here, this tilting forward is not good. So we need to make sure this, this line uh, stays, stays correct. Axis, the axis point needs to stay correct. So from a Gidamba right position, looking straight ahead, coming here halfway, eight, and then punch. And, and back Gidamba right. Okay, so again, halfway position here, and punch. Now whilst this is a basic training punch, you can use this in Kumite, um, but make sure, okay, make sure you don't give it away by doing this, elbow. Yeah, so make sure that it stays tucked to the side, stays tucked to the side, and then goes through. It's like a sword or a spear, because remember back in many, many years ago, um, this would have been a sword, this would have been a spear. Karate was invented because of the, the, the war that happened in Japan, and they were, the weapons were taken away from, from, from the Japanese, and so they used their own weapons. They used their hands, they used their knees, their feet, their head everything they could to, to make themselves as strong as the weapons they used to use. So that's where our history comes from. So it's important that we pay attention to detail to that history. We're trying to create a weapon. Yeah, sword, here, and punch. Okay, and right, Us. So you always step back, get on right, left leg, so hidari ashi, each, and now left side. So again, check your stance, just relax naturally. Remember, Juniors, lower stance, longer stance. Black belts, more natural, more relaxed, faster. You can't do the longer stances, okay? Or you can't not do the shorter stances, sorry, if you can't do the longer stances to start with. It just doesn't work that way. So we have to work hard at the beginning, okay? And then we work harder when we've got our black belts, but hey, hey there we go. So again, this time right leg forward, so Miggy Ash, okay? And punching with the left hand. So again, make sure you come up halfway and punch straight. Back to the right. So again, focus, draw through and punch. Okay, and yummy. So, oizuki, difficult technique, I think, and quite challenging to, to do to start with, but one of the first things that you learn in Shotokan Karate. Okay, now we'll recap again the third and final punch that we did on Tuesday, and this was Gyakuzuki. I think Gyakuzu means reverse or opposite. Okay, so if we take the left leg forward, we we'll punch with the right hand, so this means the opposite side, okay, to get this technique. Now, for me, this is my favourite punch. This is the by far the fastest punch I feel. I can gyak faster than most people can front punch. Um, I'm quite confident in that, but it's a, um, a good technique because it enables us to start to really engage our hips, okay? Really engage our hips. 
So we've got to work on two things just now, okay? So right, and your weight, and step forward, Gidambarai. Itch! Okay, so for beginners, Gidambarai means uh, downward uh, uh, strike, or sorry, downward, not downward strike, means downward uh, sweep or downward block in, in our case. And it's just a starting position, but it's also one of our five uh, main shaking hand karate blocks. Check your stance, okay, and then I want you to put your hips square. So these are called showmen. Okay, so square hips or front facing hips, probably the best way to describe it. So this is where your punch ends. Square, square faced. Okay, and before the punch uh, ends, it has to begin. So when we begin, we draw the hip back as if we're drawing our sword. Hip back. Okay, so this hip comes back. And then remember, the hip is the hammer. <laughs> That pushes this this through this technique and makes it as powerful as it really can be. Without the hip action, gakazuki's gakazuki. It's a punch with an arm. Okay, so it has some power. Um, um, there's nothing to suggest that it won't, but it doesn't have the same power that you can use or have when you engage the hip. So this is what I said on Tuesday about the science of karate and the biomechanics of the body. Okay, once you are able to connect them together properly things become quite incredible. And this is an explosive punch done correctly. So we check our stance, hips at showman, hips at hand me. So this is the yoi position, remember yoi meaning ready. Okay, take our focus, look down our umusun. This is a good indication of where we want our punch to end up. Draw the hip back so the opponent can't see the punch. Okay, hopefully you can't see mine, it's been hidden on my hip around the corner. Okay, and then as we deliver the punch, is squeezed and done <coughs> by the hip. Okay, so we hit the hip, the hip, the hip, the hip, the hip. Okay, so the hip. And it stays connected to the hip. It doesn't come around. So you have to draw this punch back correctly. Tight to the body, shimmy, okay? Contraction, hit, and then deliver the liver down, down this line. <laughs> and then the liver, again, looking dead center, stay focused, keep the elbow tucked in. Okay, so, back, us. Ayoi, let's do five of these fast on the right side and then five of the fast on the left side. Step back, oh sorry, step forwards, get down right to my itch, ear. Hey, left arm out, and punching Yakazuki. Itch! <laughs> And back out, draw correctly. Knee! Hate push back out. Keep your form, keep your stance. Tump! And push back out. Chi! And push back out, Kiai Go! Go! Kia! Hey, push back out. Hit and change this. Okay, so changing to uh, Migi, Migi Ashi, so in uh, Zen Kusabachi, so this is right leg downwards uh, front stance position. Okay, so same thing again. Let your stance be natural. We're not focusing on stance this evening, we're focusing on the punches. So your left hand, the drawing hand, your hikate hand, yeah, hips uh, showman. And as it comes back, hips hand me, hand me. Okay, right hand down your embusu, your performance line. Okay, so you know the center to where you need to punch. If it's here, it's wrong. It's here, it's wrong, it's here, it's wrong. So put it where you want your punch to go. And again, that same feeling, push the punch straight. Push the punch straight. Okay, so here we go. Five times. And push back out slowly, re-engage. Re and push back out again. Top. Eight, push back out again. And push back out again. One more key eye. Go! Check this elbow. Check this elbow. Check this hip. Is this hip engaged? Have you extended your punch? Have you kimmed? Have you ended it in the correct fashion? Hit not too too short. Boom. Put it in. There's nothing there. Put it in. And yeah. And step back and ready. Okay, so that's just Chokazuki, basic straight punch. I say basic because we teach that as pretty much the first lesson when you start karate. 
And people think it's been forgotten about. Well, it isn't. I do it in every single lesson I teach, okay, whether it's a black belt lesson or a 10th Q lesson, so a blue belt lesson. This is used in kata, yeah? Basai dai, kanku dai. So two high grade katas, and this is used in there, it's used in others. So important not to dismiss this as a lower grade technique. Never. Never, never. Okay, the second technique then, oizuki, oizuki. Used within kumite fighting and also used within the kata uh, uh, taikyo kushiden, the first basic kion kata that we do. Here in Shodan, the first kata we do of the 26 traditional Shokukan karate katas. So oizuki. And then of course, gyakuzuki. Gyakuzuki, probably the greatest punch that's ever been designed, in my humble opinion. Uh, for kumite, it's absolutely brilliant. There's different ways of doing it. Um, in kata as well, uh, kanki dai comes to mind. Um, but obviously other katas as well. So it's a really, really good, strong, powerful technique. And then we come to some more obscure techniques, which just we're going to have a little bit of fun with this evening, because uh, um, we need to have a little bit of fun, let's be honest. We need to have a, uh, create some uh, excitement in our lives. So we're going to start with um, Iponken. Iponken. So remember what I said about this? This is Ken. Ken is a fist, not Barbie's boyfriend. Siken. Siken. So any ideas what Ippon Ken would be? Any ideas what Ippon Ken would be? What's really annoying is that I normally get the juniors to comment and I can't get any of that. It just tells me that you're here, which is great that you're here. Thank you for watching. I'm hopefully not watching, hopefully taking part. So any ideas what Ippon Ken might be? Ippon Ken. Okay, so Ippon means generally one. Uh, for my days, it's Ippon in the fight. All I needed to hear was Ippon. <laughs> so, Ippon, one. So, we're going to do a uh, one knuckle fist. Okay, now in Shotokan Karate, there's different ways of doing this. So, some styles uh, use just the finger on itself. Again, traditionally in Shotokan Karate, we tend to use the thumb to augment, to combine. Okay, because augment means uh, attached is the wrong word, it means combined, it means together. There you go. So, we combine this technique and put it together. So the thumb just squeezing on the top of the knuckle, but the knuckle protrudes, so it comes out just that little bit further. I'm hoping you're able to pick this up on camera and it's not too blurred or anything like that. So if I turn around here, okay, you can hopefully see Ipponken, Ipponken. Okay, so we're gonna do this for a little bit of fun. Um, and again, this is a technique that isn't just used for uh, um, Kihon, basic karate that we're doing now, it's also um, used in kata, okay? We, we don't use it in kumite, um, you'd be in a lot of trouble if you tried to use this in a competition. Um, so it's uh, only done really in, in, in kata and kihon basics. So we're going to bow and yoi, and step back gidamurai. I have to remember to miss my tori gates that's behind me. Okay, so where's your hand is on your hip, make a normal fist if you can, and then as you squeeze forwards, Ipponken. Now we're going to do it uh, again, slight variation. We're going to do tati. Now tati means vertical. Okay, tati is where this is not tati. This is tati. If anything, this is yoko, but 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 this is tati. So tati ipon kumite, uh, ipon uh, zuki or ipponken, probably the best terminology to give you. Okay, and you want to kind of get this arm so it's extending as one unit and it completes as one technique. I'll try to demonstrate for, from what I'm trying to say to you. So we're going to go uh, throw right here to here. Okay, hips square. But you could change the hand me. We're going to do square. Eight okay, step back, get under, right? And again, look as in focus. Try to visualize an opponent. So if you can't do that, then think of your better self. I tell my students this all the time. If you're struggling to find an opponent, an imaginary person in your head, then think of your better self. How would you want to be? How would you want to perform? Because um, the way we perceive ourselves and the way we want ourselves to be isn't always correct. Okay? We've been training in front of mirrors for the last few months, which has been brilliant because we've been able to see ourselves. And, and although not very comfortable to start with, the students were very concerned about looking at themselves in the mirrors, everybody became better. And our grading that we had just over a month ago was phenomenal and probably the form and the technique was probably the best we've seen for a long time. So we do need to pay attention to these techniques. Okay, so you can bring this hip back here, okay, but when you drive through, hip square, hip such showman. Okay, and keep this 
this line here. So this, this knuckle, Ipong Ken, has just been sticking out a little bit. Okay, so we'll anyway, and step back, give them right, itch, and punching forwards, Ipong Ken, itch, and back, give them right, knee, and back, give them right, Punching ki eye, ish, and back here and roy, and change legs. Okay, so uh, Tuesday I said that 80% of the world's population was right handed. I was corrected by a group of scientists who know far more than I do, and it is 90% of the world are right handed. So I'm part of the 10%, which is great. I like to be a little bit different, I always have done. So the 10% people, this is for you, left hand, left hand. Take up your position. Remember to keep this as a normal fist on your hip and only squeeze the ipong ken upon contact at the kime point. So punch it, itch, and back here, number eight. Hey, knee, and hand back here, number eight. Sun, and back here, number eight. I go do ya. Ay na me. I'm ready, boss. And we. Okay, well done. Just shake your arms off. Let's not get any tension in the body. We don't want that. We need to be relaxed. If we relax, we're fast. Okay. If we tense too much with punches, in particular, they become slow, lethargic, and they don't work. It's as simple as that. So we think that to get power, we have to put all our body into this. Okay. Unfortunately, when we do that, we start tensing up muscles far too soon and the wrong muscles. And so then for the punch becomes slower. You might ultimately think that actually power is power. So if we have somebody who's like the Hulk, okay, um, very cool I might add. Anyone who's green is cool, let's be honest. Um, you've got the Hulk is really big and so therefore really powerful, but actually not as powerful as say his buddy Thor, who's a quarter of the size, but it's faster. Okay, and it's speed that creates power. That's what we need to understand from a karate perspective. I'm going to go with scientific here, but I don't want to go there. So, so from a karate perspective, speed is power, and that's what we need to have in the back of our heads, not bulk, not bulk. Okay. Ah, uh, us Sam, thank you for joining. Unfortunately, I do not know why I'm not getting any of the voice comments. So I'm going to have to play around with this. Um, so there we go. So we are looking for speed. To have speed, we have to relax our body. We have to relax our body. If we tense, it's slow. If we relax, it's fast. So that's just a simple thing to describe. Okay, so another technique. Uh, let's think of another one. Let's go for something the kids like. Nakadaka. Nakadaka Ipong Ken. Nakadaka Ipong Ken. Okay, the children in my dojo absolutely love this, almost as much as they do with uh, Kaki Waki Uki, which is reverse wedge block. I've got to be honest, as a sensei, I have a little bit of play with words around that one, and we might change the name of that. So, but Nakadaka Ipon Ken. So we've done Ipon Ken. Okay, so Ipon Ken is uh, one finger punch, and now we're going to do Nakadaka, which middle, ni middle, middle finger, uh, one, middle knuckle, one punch. Oh, I've messed that up, haven't I? So we're now looking at uh, taking the fist, and using the middle knuckle this time, the biggest knuckle to protrude here, okay? And we're actually attacking with that technique. So you have to kind of squeeze it. You have to squeeze this together so this one kind of comes out. But again, it's a single karate fist with just this a little bit further. And this thumb, again, supports the fist. The karate fist has to be strong at all points because this is a weapon. And using this weapon, if we do this, there's weakness, okay? There's lots of bones in your hand, and if you hit anything like this, they will break really easily because they're really small. Together, they're incredible. They are phenomenal. And you will see karateka over years break concrete slabs of wood and all sorts of wonderful things. There's actually no point to any of that, but it's, you know, it's good fun. Um, this, is, this is not good. So we look at form. Do you remember I said on Tuesday about uh, Lego bricks? 
and I forgot my Lego tonight, but I'm definitely going to bring it for next week. Lego bricks, you build a tower, okay, you build it with the wonky bricks and different sized bricks and you don't put them together properly, you don't pay attention to detail. And you build your tower and you get to about the sixth story, boom, and it falls over. Okay, it's a little bit like Jenga, it just falls over. You get the same bricks, maybe even the same colour because that's cool, okay, and then you build. You build your layers strong and you check every connection, you make sure those bricks are squeezed together so they're fitted together and then your tower can go bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah, just look at skyscrapers in the world. It's all about connections. Karate fist, exactly the same. Works on exactly the same principle. So we have to make sure that we are able to connect this part of the body correctly. So Nakadaka takes a little bit of practice because we don't use it a lot in our, in our dojos. Maybe I used to use it a lot when I was younger, but not so much nowadays. Squeeze the middle knuckle out. Now this one we're going to change uh, for a little bit of fun. Okay, we're going to go from the downward block position here, and we're going to come in from the double hips to here. So we're going to come from this position here. Okay, so we did this on Tuesday as a warm up, squeezing in the arms. Okay, to create good form. Check our stance, and then nakadaka. Okay, start from a normal hip here, and then squeeze here. Okay, this is a great technique on somebody who tries to hug you. Okay, obviously no one can do that at the moment because the world is full of um, COVID. So we're not allowed to go anywhere near within two metres of each other. But if someone hugs you, okay, you just want to get rid of them. A nice little nakadak at your ken in the ribs makes them jump. Okay, so it's quite a good one. Uh, juniors, I never taught you that. So this is, this is a good technique to use. So we'll do nakadak at your ken. Okay, so from a front stance position, okay, put your hands on your hips. Make sure your fists are good. Then as you bring them around, this is a washi technique, so round... Round technique, yeah. nakadaka iponken. I do like saying it, it's cool. Okay, and back again, Ambre. Back to the yui position, ready position. Okay, and attacking chudang. Chudang is sort of the lower area of the body. Okay, nakadaka iponken. So ready, itch, yeah. And back again, Ambre. Yui position. Focus on these elbows. Try to get them tucked in as much as you can. If they're like this, you look like a chicken, which is not a great thing. Not in my kitchen, because that's a good chance you're going to get eaten. So, here, tuck them in. Nakadaka, here, here. Middle knuckle fist strike. I think I actually said it correct that time, as opposed to the mishmash that I said earlier. Nakadaka, you in. Okay, let's go for five. Step back, get under right. Okay, let's bow first. Us. Aloy, and step back, get under right. Itch. Just hit the Tori gate again. I have to be careful because it will fall forward on me and it's going to hurt. So, Nakadaka Ipon Ken. Hands to the side here, coming through. And back in and right. Eight to your position. Tuck those elbows in, drop those shoulders, relax those shoulders. Ish! Nakadaka Ipon Ken. And again, position. And back. And one more. Shi! And back. And of course, if a karate instructor ever says those dreaded words, one more, what they mean is a lot more. Okay, don't ever trust us. We're all the same, we're all just as bad as one another. Hands here in burn. Last one, Kiai. Ish! And Yame. And step back, down right, left leg, Hidari Ashi. Ish! Stepping forward then, Nakadaka, Iponken. Hands to the side. Ish! And back in and right. And knee. And back in and right. Tom. And back in and right. She. And back in and right. Hey, one more key eye. Ish. And yamay. Yamay just means finish. So we stand back to this position. We bow. And then back to your way, ready to go again. Depends on your sensei. Uh, one of my first senseis um, never said the word yame. I think it was always yoi. <laughs> and we never seemed to stop. So uh, from a cardio perspective, those lessons were utterly awesome because we never stopped. We couldn't breathe at the end of it, obviously. But, uh, but um, yeah, yame means finish, yoi means ready. Hajime means begin. So I'm trying to teach you some Japanese whilst we're doing this as well because uh, um, it's easy to do so when we're online. Okay, so uh, we've so far covered Chokazuki, straight punch, Oizuki, stepping punch or lunge punch, uh, Gyakuzuki, reverse punch, 
Ipponken, Ipponken, one knuckle fist, and then Nakadaka, Ipponken. So we've got to uh, our fifth technique then. Okay, so let's think of a new one then, to um, give you a different one. Uh, hurricane, okay, or Hurricane. Hurricane is a better way of saying it, Hurricane. So this is four knuckle, flat fist. Four knuckle, flat fist. So again, take the Shotokan Karate fist, okay, and then imagine that a steamroller's just gone over the top and splatted it. Okay, so it literally becomes there. The thumb comes in again, keeping the fingers tight together. We use the thumb in karate to support the fingers. Okay, the fingers are said on their own are individually very weak, but together incredibly strong. The thumb is not a great, it's not a great tool if I'm honest. Um, juniors, you're going to disagree with me because this is only good for Playstations and Xboxes, isn't it really? You can't do anything else good with it. Um, actually, you can in karate. Karate, this is, this is the thing that links everything together. Your other fingers have lots of articulation. So we've got a joint here, a joint here, and a joint here, and a joint here. There's joints everywhere on the fingers. The thumb, base, middle, nothing. That's it, base and middle. So it's just two, two joints. Here, joint one. Yeah, joint two, joint three. So there's three joints on the finger, and there's four of them. Twelve. I just made it up. Well, actually, I guessed the answer there. So twelve against two, which is better. These have a lot of articulation. However, the thumb is what brings them together. And remember I said earlier about connections. This is the important thing that we need to understand about connections with karate. So, take your normal C Ken, your normal four fists, okay, or fist Ken here, like so. And then move the fingers. I hope I'm in frame so you can see that. So from here, this technique evolves into a flat, flat fist. So this technique here, we're still hitting, generally we're seeking with the main two uh, um, knuckles of the fist because uh, they're the strongest parts of the hand. Okay, but this technique is really good for this area on the body, this area on the body. Quite a dangerous technique. So we don't do it too often in the dojo. So hurricane. Hurricane, four knuckle flat fist. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so first of all, again, get your composure, yeah, get yourself into the correct position, okay? Heels together, toes pointed, hands both sides. Whenever I bow and come up, I'm then focused. Focused on the job in hand. What technique am I doing? What has my sensei just told me? What has my sensei just told me? Okay, so I'm listening with these ears. If I don't know, I put my hand up and I ask the question, Sensei, can you show me that again? Really important that when we're training karate that we don't just nod our heads and bow and say this all the time. It's, it doesn't help you, so it's better to ask questions. Okay? But when we come up to this position, we are ready to, to train. Okay? And training in Japanese is keiko. Okay? So when you're in keiko, keiko mode, yeah, you're ready. So, oops. Keiko, training position, yeah, or ready position for training. Yoi just means that ready position that we're in. Okay, so we're going to step back and I'm just going to make sure I don't hit my Tori gate because it's new. So from here, we're going to do a Jodan Hiroken. Okay, so from here, come through, <coughs> four knuckle flat fist. Okay, and straight back to the Danbro Wake, all right? And Hiroken, itch! <coughs> Okay, now look at my thumb here. This is not good. Okay, and I see students do this all the time where their thumb is just wandering. It's almost as if it's still playing the PlayStation virtually. Okay, no, it must come connected. Must come connected. So come back. Remember, normal fist on the hip. Don't do hurricane here. Okay, uh, juniors do this a lot, but it's bad technique. So keep here, keep here. Hurricane at the end. Itch! Hand back to them, right? And knee. And back to them, right? Son. Hey, and back to them, right? Chi. Oh, sensei, that was a bad one. And back to them, right? Go. Hey, back to them, right? Hand change legs. Again, for the ten percenters, us left-handed people, this hopefully is your time to shine. Okay, so make sure again, line, focus on where you're punching, keep the fist strong, normal on the hip, keep it tight to the hip, keep it tight to the body, come through and then only then do you squeeze out. Awesome. 
So this is my natural side, so I'm left-handed, so I find this very, very good. And the reason I probably have loved karate so much and stuck with karate for so long is that I practice my bad side more than I do my left side. So my bad side has become good. My good side has become, stays good, maybe, maybe a little bit better, I don't know. I have a good balance. Karate really suits me as a left-handed person. I don't think it suits everybody, but it definitely suits me, and that's how I made that connection with it. And um, as a fighter, I was able to fight right and left-handed, which also makes me awkward. Okay, so I was really good at that. So um, we have to in life, whether it's karate or whatever you do, you have to find where where you fit and what fits you. And when I first went into a Shotokan karate dojo, I was the only adult, and I say adult loosely because I was very young, but I was still an adult. And I walked in and I was the only adult there, apart from a group of little juniors that were tiny, up to sort of waist height. And they were punching and kiddying all the time and I'm just going to go in, trying not to embarrass myself any more than I already had by just going there. But actually everybody at the end of the lesson welcomed me and said, you are coming back, aren't you? You are going to come back to the dojo. Yes, of course I am. I really didn't want to. Yes, of course, no, no, no I really, yeah, anyway, somebody even phoned me and said, you are coming back. So I came back. They took me under their wing, they, I think, encouraged me, developed me, made me the person I am today. And that's why I love this so much, that's why I love martial arts so much, and particularly Shotokan Karate, because it changed me as a, as, a, as a person. I fitted and found somewhere where I fitted. Really good feeling. Okay, step back in and right. So, focus, position, here it came. Ish! And back in and right. Chokazuki to Oizuki to Gyakazuki to Iponken to Nakadaki Iponken to Hiroken. Okay, so we've done quite a few uh, punching techniques there. Okay, and we're going to finish with two others, which is going to be the same one but for different ways. Um, now, I was taught three ways of saying this, okay, but I tend to use just Tetsui. Tetsui is hammer fist, iron hammer, hammer hand. Okay, and back in the day when I first started karate, it was uh, tetsui, Shutsui and Kentsui. Okay, there's three different ways of doing it. And one meant hammer hand, one meant hammer fist, and one meant iron hammer. So um, I tend to use Tetsui. I think most uh, modern day instructors tend to use those techniques. They are ever so slightly different. Okay, there's variations on how you do them. So hammer fist. Uh, we use this in the Kata Hian Shodan to start with. Okay, but we use it in other Katas as well. So we're going to do two ways. Uh, we're going to do the Tati. Tati is vertical. Okay, and then we're going to do Yoko. Yoko is side. So we'll do both of these because they're both really cool. So what we're going to do is bow, first of all, and literally all you need to do with this particular one, okay, is make a normal fist, a normal ken, okay, in terms of Shotokan Karate, squeeze it, and you are hitting with the base of the hand, okay, this part here. Now this, um, this part here, this fleshy part, we use this for another technique, and I'm not going to do it too much, but it's that one. Okay, but we're using the base of the hand. So this is a, a breaking, smashing, uh, like an atiwaza technique, a breaking technique. Okay, so let's bow. And yoi, and step back, giramurai kamei, each. Okay, so ketsumi uchi. Uh, let's go for, I'll tell you what we're gonna do, let's do the kata. So we're gonna go from the giramurai position here, so from Hian Shodan kata, for those that know this. So if you're a ninth cube belt, you'll definitely know this because it's your kata. Okay, so front stance, right leg forward, take your right fist and normal, normal gidan right position, so downward block position, okay? So remember here, your hips shouldn't be showman, they should be hanmi, okay? And what you're going to do is you need to pull up into tejidachi, T stance, okay? And you're going to imagine that someone's grasping your hands, so they're going to pull you away, or they're trying to drag you away, yeah? They're trying to pull you away. So you're, they're going to pull away, and you're going to pull against them. Now, if I put my hand on the top there, this is how somebody left-handed will be grabbing you. You are going to pull against their thumb. Because, remember what I said about thumb? It's rubbish. It's a waste of space. The thumb, only two, two joints, two pieces of articulation. You go against it, oh, and it's on its own. You pull up. 
So it's this feeling of pulling away. The fingers, remember there's four of them and they've got three joints each, so that's 12 articulated. You try and pull away from the fingers, it's almost impossible. So we will go against the thumb. So we have to think of this in our heads. Someone's grabbed us just like that and we are gonna pull away and hammer fist strike. We've grasped here, pull away and hammer fist here. Okay, this can be used to uh, escape and attack, uh, hit someone on the head, hit them on the shoulder, hit them on the arm, break the arm, all sorts of things. It has lots of different applications. And this particular part of kata is really exciting, but we're not doing that tonight. So from this position here, grab, pull up, and hammer fist. Back to get over. Let's do for five of these. So tetsui uchi, tati, tati vertical member. Okay, so pull up, ish, and back down. And again, ish, and back down again. Tom, yeah. And back down again. Chi, yeah. And back down again. Kiai, go. And back to get under right. Change legs. Let's go for the left side. Again, get under right position here. Pull up and have itch, yeah. And back to get under right. Knee, yeah. And back to get under right. Tom, yeah. And back to get under right. Chi, yeah. And back to get under right. Go, yeah. And back to get under right. And yeah, mate. And right. Okay, so Tetsui, Tati Tetsuyuchi. So let's do the other one. The other one is Yoko. Yoko Tetsuyuchi. Okay, this is used in lots of katas. Hiyo ni den, jion, all sorts of katas that are coming to my mind. But anyway, so from this position, we're just going to take it from the opposite shoulder, I think. So let's get into side stance. Okay, so we haven't done this this evening or in the last couple of days. So side stance, feet parallel, not too wide. Okay, feet parallel, let the knees drop forward. Horse riding stance, okay? Some people ride very wide horses, okay? And I think when I was younger, we were taught this stance to get wide and low, and since they always made us get lower and lower and lower. Black belt, more natural, more natural, going to natural stances. So, again, we're not working on stances, are we? We're doing Tetsui. Let's go from underneath the arms, I think it's good. So we're gonna come here, like so. Okay, so from this position, left hand tucking under the right hand and Tetsuyuchi. End point, end point. Kimei, Kimei, Kimei. Not, this is no good. No speed in that at all. There might be power, but it'd be power from this only. If I can do this, the power goes through to my little toe on my right leg. So we do this correctly. Okay, so Tetsuyuchi, hey, and five times with the left hand. It's Shoulders, check your stance, not too wide, not too low. Okay, Tetsuyuchi, ish, here, knee, here, thumb, here, chi, here, aikiai, go, here, and yame. So, hati, yoko, yoko, okay, os. We're almost done, we're only doing an hour this evening, so. Uh, let me just recap what we've done over the last two days. So on Tuesday, if you weren't here, and on Thursday. So we've been looking at the art of punching, the zuki, the, the strike with the fists predominantly. Okay? So we must make sure we remember a couple of things. Ken, meaning fist, siken. Okay? This is really important. Yeah, the, mo the most important parts of the hands. And how to make a fist. Yeah, fingers in. One at a time. Close in, strength with, with, a, with the fist uh, locked in with the thumb. The thumb, as I said earlier, is not a great tech tool, to honest, but it's a good for this purpose, locking everything in. Okay? So, Chokazuki, straight punch. Oizuki, stepping punch. Gyakuzuki. Reverse punch. Ipponken. Ipponken. One knuckle fist. Nakadaka. Ipponken. 
Nakebeka e Ponkeng. flat fist, four knuckle flat fist. Tetsui, Tetsui, hand fist, Tati Tetsui. Yoko Tetsui. just one technique for the whole hour because I know the juniors get bored. Um, so hopefully there's a little bit of variation there in terms of punches. There are a lot more by the way, uh, we've not even uh, scratched the surface yet. Lots more techniques to use with the hand. Um, not decided on what we'll do next week, but uh, with limited space we have to be mindful of where we're training and what we can actually do. Um, we've done kata in the kitchen before, it's a little bit messy, particularly if the dog gets involved because um, she can always get launched from one side to the other when I kick. But um, we will, we, will, we will look into that, okay? So if you've got suggestions, then please you can message me on here and you can always make comments and stuff. Please be nice. Um, and then uh, I can put those into the lessons. I'll desperately try to save this to Facebook Live so you can watch it later if you haven't seen it uh, live. And I'll also try to remember to save it to my device so I can then put it on the, our YouTube channel, which I forgot to do on Tuesday. So I must apologize for that. And uh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, and we will continue here until at least the 2nd of December, okay? Regarding the dojos, um, our plan is to continue with our temporary dojos, uh, because I don't think we'll be allowed back um, in our normal dojos before the end of this year, if I'm honest. So, um, Potton will still remain closed, I'm pretty confident, up until at least Christmas. Sandy, I think, will be the same, because they're both schools. Um, so, we'll hopefully, fingers crossed, be back to the Eco Hub at Gamingay on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Um, Possibly back at All Saints on Tuesday because that's our normal dojo there, but it depends, depends again on the school and the circumstances around that. Um, and then hopefully back to our new dojo in Sandy. Um, I say back to because you haven't been there, just me. Um, so I had a little recce look around uh, a couple of weeks ago before the lockdown. Um, so that's that's our plans. So obviously, all of this is a little bit up in the air because of COVID. Um, and as soon as we get back to our normal dojos of Potting, Clifton, Sandy and Gammy go, then I think that would be wonderful, but um, I, I don't know when that will be. So at the moment we'll just continue with this, I hope that's okay. Um, I appreciate you joining me. For me, even if you're not there, I enjoy the workout and uh, the peace and quiet, the whole family's gone out, it's fantastic. Um, just for a walk with the dog. Okay, so well, as usual, we'll finish with the Dojo-kun. So bow. Okay, so Dojo-kun. Hitots Jinkan Kuokan Sei Isoimoto Koto. Hitots Makato no michi o omoru koto. Hitots Doryoko no seishin o yashinao koto. Hitots Radio omonju o koto. Hitots Keki no yo imashimuru koto. Hey, hey, os. And as I said earlier, I will try to figure out a way so I can see you making comments or hopefully putting thumbs up or whenever my dog turns up a little love heart. Um, I really like that interactive part of this particular app um, and uh, why we use this is because everybody said they like Facebook Live and the way that it came across and everything. Um, as I say, it's been a little while since I've done this and I can't remember my exact setup previously so at the moment I can see when you join but I can't see if you're making any comments but I will reply to them, you know I will or I'll like, at least like them after, the, after we finish this lesson. So uh, thanks very much everybody, I hope you continue training, uh, remember you can train at any point anywhere. Your dojo, I say I call this karate in my own dojo, your dojo is anywhere. Okay? As soon as you bow, and as soon as you come up, you are there. You are in your dojo, and you can practice wherever you jolly well like. Um, just don't tell people that, that maybe that's what you're doing. Um, and I will see you again on Tuesday at 7pm, and uh, hopefully look forward to, uh, to training with you again there. Have a fantastic weekend. Um, try to uh, enjoy some of this nice, cold, crisp, but uh, lovely weather that we've got at the moment. And please keep yourself straight, safe, please. Oss. So we'll finish there, right? Oss. Oi, sui sai, arigato gozaimasu. That means good night and thank you very much. Jamatane, jamatane, see you soon. Oss. Oss.
Come on.